Ladies and gentlemen, there are moments in the life of any civilization when one must pause and ask oneself, have we taken leave of our collective senses? The spectacle currently unfolding across the United States, this breathtaking retreat from one of medicine's most triumphant achievements, surely qualifies as such a moment. We are witnessing in real time the voluntary abandonment of vaccines, those miraculous preventives that have spared countless millions from the ravages of disease. And we are doing so not because science has failed us, but because we have failed science. Consider the profound selfishness of this moment. We are the beneficiaries of one of the greatest public health achievements in human history. We have inherited a world largely free from the diseases that terrorized previous generations. And what do we do with this magnificent inheritance? We squander it. We throw it away in favor of the comforting delusion that our personal research on the Internet somehow trumps the expertise of those who have dedicated their lives to understanding how the human immune system works. Into this fertile ground of confusion steps our political class, ever ready to exploit fear for electoral gain. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., that walking embodiment of the proposition that intelligence is not hereditary, has been elevated to positions of influence despite or perhaps because of, his long campaign against the very vaccines that saved his generation from the scourges that decimated their ancestors. When political appointees begin questioning vaccine safety, they don't just sow doubt, they legitimize ignorance and give permission for parents to gamble with their children's lives. The path back to sanity requires more than just better public health messaging, though that would help. It requires a cultural reckoning with our relationship to truth itself. We must relearn the difficult art of distinguishing between legitimate scientific debate and manufactured controversy, between reasonable caution and irrational fear, between protecting our children and endangering them. The vaccines are still there, waiting. The diseases they prevent are still there, lurking. The choice, for now, remains ours. But history will not judge kindly a generation that chose superstition over science, fear over fact, and in doing so, condemned their own children to face diseases that had been consigned to the past. In the end, this great retreat from reason may stand as the defining folly of our age.